Hello everyone, welcome to my lecture on fetal skull and female pelvimetry. This has been divided into two parts. First part we will discuss regarding the fetal skull and in the second part we shall discuss regarding the female pelvis. While discussing regarding the fetal skull, we can discuss, we are supposed to learn regarding the most importantly the diameters, we will know about the landmarks before beforehand, before going on to the diameters. We will read about what are the bones that make up the fetal skull. We will learn about the sutures. We will learn about the fontanelle. Going on to the bones of the skull. How is, how is fetal skull is very much important in obstetric point of view. We need to learn fetal skull in obstetric point of view because it is the most common presenting part of all the presenting parts during delivery. It is the least compressible presenting part and it is the largest presenting part. When we compare it with breech and all, these are very much compressible, these are not most common. This is, these are not large. So that is the reason why learning about the fetal skull is very much important. Okay, let's move on to learn regarding the bones that make up the fetal skull. Fetal skull consists of a base and a vault. What you see in this picture is a vault. This is the vault. Base of the skull is not visible here. Actually, it exists inside which separates the brain matter from the neck. And vault consists of frontal bone. This is the frontal bone, right frontal bone. Left frontal bone is not visible. This is the right parietal bone. Left parietal bone is not visible. And a single occipital bone. Of course, this is the temporal bone. This is the right temporal bone. Left temporal bone would be present on the other side. These are separated by the sutures and these forms the fontanelle. This is the anterior fontanelle and this is the posterior fontanelle. So as such, these bones, frontal, parietal and occipital bones, forms the vault of the skull. These cranial bones have a peculiar character which helps in certain function of the fetal skull. These are very much thin, these are weakly ossified, easily compressible and they are interconnected by the membranes which allows the skull bones to overlap one another and to undergo a process called moulding where through with this process fetal skull can fit in the female pelvis during delivery. Let's move on to learn regarding the sutures. There are four types of sutures. Sagittal suture which is anterior posterior suture, coronal suture and lambdoid sutures are transverse sutures. Frontal suture is again an anterior posterior suture. Let's move on to the first sagittal suture. Sagittal suture separates the two parietal bones. This is the anterior posterior suture. So this is the sagittal suture. These are the two parietal bones, right parietal bone and the left parietal bone. This sagittal suture separates these two bones and it extends anterior posteriorly, divides the head into two halves that is the right and left sides. Second suture is the lambdoid suture. Lambdoid suture is the transfer suture. So this is the lambdoid suture. This suture separates, this is the occipital bone. This is the right parietal bone, left parietal bone. This suture separates the occipital bone from the parietal bones. And this is the posterior fontanella. Third one is the coronal suture. Coronal suture is again a transverse suture. It separates the frontal bones from the parietal bones. These are the two frontal bones and this is, this is the parietal bone. This is the coronal suture. <coughs> Excuse me. Frontal suture. This is the frontal suture. This is anterior posterior suture. This suture separates the two frontal bones. Right and left frontal bones are separated by these sutures. It extends from the anterior fontanelle to the glabella. What is the clinical importance of these sutures? These sutures help us to identify the position, attitude and the degree of rotation of the fetal. By palpating these suture lines in the fontanelle, we estimate these positions. And these suture lines also help in the moulding. Let's move on to learn regarding the fontanelle. As such, there are many fontanelle, but we are more concerned in learning regarding the anterior and the posterior fontanelle. So let's learn regarding the anterior fontanelle first. This is this anterior fontanelle is also called as Blackmore. So this is the anterior fontanelle. This is the diamond shaped area 
it is junction between the frontal suture sagittal suture and the coronal suture this is the coronal suture frontal and anterior suture and these are the two frontal bones and these are the two parietal bones the posterior frontal this is the posterior frontal it is a triangular depressed area this is the junction between the sagittal suture and the lambdoid suture and this is the occipital bone these are the two parietal bones the right parietal bone and the left parietal bone it is normally open at birth and closes by 6 to 8 weeks of life let's move on to learn regarding the landmarks to know the diameter as well first we should know what are the landmarks <coughs> so coming on to the landmarks this is the nasian and the nasian is the root of the nose and this is the glabella glabella is the elevated orbital ridge above that is the brow or this is also known as sinciput so this is an area between the glabella and the anterior fontanelle and we next moving on to this posterior part <coughs> This is the anterior fontanel or the bregma. This is the vertex, <coughs> and this is the posterior fontanel, and this is the occiput. Occiput, posterior fontanel, vertex, and the anterior fontanel or the bregma. Based on these landmarks, we define various uh, diameters of the fetal skull. Okay, let's move on in the next topic to learn regarding the diameters of the fetal skull so there are actually we will learn about uh, four anterior posterior diameters and two transverse diameters these anterior posterior diameters are the engaging diameters of the fetal skull so the first one is the suboccipital pragmatic diameter this is the occiput, this is suboccipital, this is the bregma. This diameter extends from here to here and it is 9.5 cm in length. This is the most common engaging diameter in a flexed head. So, when we see during delivery, this is the very much flexed head, this is an roti, and this is the most engaging diameter. This is the bregma, this is the posterior part. So, this is the most common engaging part. The second anterior posterior diameter is the occipital frontal. This is the occiput and this is the frontal. <coughs> this is this is the engaging diameter during the partially deflexed head. This is about 11 centimeters in diameter. So when the head is deflexed from occiput, it extends from the occiput to the frontal region. This is an ACN glabella, this is the frontal region. The third one is the supraoccipital mental. Occipital supraoccipital mental or extends from the occiput to the mental this is the most uh, largest diameter this is the presenting diameter in the brow presentation this is in partially extended head when the brow is the presenting part this is the uh, engaging diameter the fourth one is the submento pragmatic submento behind the mentum submento pragmatic this is the engaging diameter during the face presentation this is a 9.5 centimeters in diameter it extends from the junction of the neck to the lower jaw to the center of the anterior fontanelle. So when face is the present, fully extended neck where face is the presenting part, this is the engaging diameter. Now, having learned regarding the anterior posterior diameters, let us summarize this. So this is the fully flexed head, deflexed head, partially extended head, fully extended head. So in fully flexed head, suboccipital pragmatic is the engaging diameter in deflexed head occipital frontal is the engaging diameter in a partially extended head or brow presentation occipital mentum is the engaging diameter in fully extended head submento pragmatic is the engaging diameter let's learn regarding the transverse diameters now again there are we are mostly concerned with the two transverse diameters the first one being the biparietal diameter which is 9.5 centimeters and bitemporal diameter 8 centimeters <coughs> so this is the biparietal diameter which is the maximal extension point this is 
extends from the right parietal eminence to the left parietal eminence. You can watch, uh, you kindly subscribe to my channel on YouTube. You can watch numerous lectures regarding the uh, medical course. This is easy for your preparation in your PG exams and to re review your knowledge. Thank you.